Hi, welcome to the BitNations channel. I'm James, the creator of BitNations, and today I want to give a little introduction to the game, uh, maybe show some gameplay, and, and talk about a couple things. So, first things first, when you come down to the homepage, you see BitNations is a nation simulation game where you get to lead your own nation. That means you get to make decisions that change your government type, raise armies, grow your population, build up your economy, and even go to war with other players. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to create a new nation called Mars, the leader of Elon Musk, of course, um, and Mars is red, so I, I picked a red flag. This is kind of what we have when we get started. Um, so up at the top, I have my menu. Uh, I see the name of my nation, where I can edit my de nation's details. Um, I have this kind of welcome message here, um, and then a couple what looks like a components on a dashboard, some control buttons down here, and a button that says progress that I can't press yet. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and click the get started Congratulations on the beginning of your new nation. You are currently in the Stone Age. Respond to issues and press next to progress your nation. Once you reach the agricultural age in just a few turns, you will be able to set your nation's tax rate. I'm just going to go ahead and click next like it like it recommended. Uh, it looks like another issue has come up under attack. A competing tribe across the river has attacked your village in the middle of the night. I can either call all men to arms and retaliate immediately retreat into the woods and find refuge in a safer area, or capture the opposing tribe's princess and hold her hostage. Let's be aggressive. Okay, we're in the agricultural age. It says so right here. Progress to the next age is the mechanical age. Everything is on fire. Let's go into the next step and um, talk about uh, the tabs down here. Um, if I click economy, I get an overview of my economy. Um, it looks like we have a, a GDP here, a little description. Mars is a tiny village. The economy is stagnant. The population is poor with the average income at about 41000 a year. Revenue, we've only had one turn of revenue so far, and that gave us $5,000. Um, we have $0 in spending, so altogether we are income after expenses in the green. Let's check out the population tab. Uh, Details about the population. This green bar is showing the total number of citizens over time. This red bar is showing the number of criminals, and the orange bar is showing the number of sick. The population is happy and somewhat educated with a good amount of civil liberties. Um, so happiness is pretty high. Intelligence kind of in the middle. Freedom, okay. Um, and we have this message, your citizens are happy to live in such a healthy nation. Because I guess because nobody's sick. So that's cool. Um, before, I'm going to skip over the military tab for now. We're going to look at the manage tab. Um, this is where we can manage our nation, actually do some things. So by selecting manage, uh, I have a few options here. I can set our tax rate, adjust our spending budget, um, manage our investments, and also manage uh, what, fo what resources we want to focus on to gather. Um, setting the tax rate is pretty straightforward. There's the upper class, middle class, and lower class, um, each of which you know, I could independently set their tax rate at a different rate if I wanted to. Um, of course, how drastically we change the tax rate is going to determine how much influence it's going to cost. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to just max out my tax rate 90% across the board, that's going to cost me 30 influence. I only have 24, so it's not going to let me pass that legislation. It's basically you have money and then you have political influence. Next is investments. Uh, technological investments unlock new military units. Um, as well as logistical investments also unlock military units. Cultural investments um, are more for population happiness and increasing your population's earned wages. Um, and as well, logistical investments also help boost the economy and um, the wages. So let's uh, start by investing in a plow first since we're in the agricultural age. Um, I'm going to select the plow. I'm going to make sure it's on buy. I'm going to see that it costs $10,000 in 10 influence, which we're good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and purchase that. We see the check mark there, meaning that's taken care of, that's done, transaction's completed, we can't do anything else here. Um, and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to click the next button. Okay, so we had another issue come up. Food supply has made townspeople ill. Um, let's, uh, let's just have the clergy bless the food for now. Um, we are a corporate dictatorship <clears throat> at the moment. Let's go ahead and check out the military tab now. Now that we have the, invested in the plow technology, we should have unlocked our first military unit, infantry. So I'm going to select buy units. I'm going to see that infantry is here. And I'm just going to buy five units to start. So this table kind of shows me the total number of units I have, 
how many of them are available to be deployed either defensively or offensively if you're in war and then the number of, of units that are deployed so obviously I haven't deployed anybody so I just have all five units uh, of my infantry in reserve okay let's go ahead and focus on getting to the next age so we are in the agricultural age um, we want to get to the next age um, and we're going to do that by gathering resources uh, to make it easy for us to track, I'm going to edit my dashboard and just add age progress to my dashboard so that we can see it right here at the top. Um, so we need to get to the mechanical age. So I'm going to go ahead and click manage. I'm going to go to resources. Um, resources is where we can combine two resources to start generating another resource. So in this example, I've combined two grapes. This is going to give me wine. Um, so I'm going to get one wine for every turn. So for example, if I go back, I click next when I come back to resources, um, I see now that I have generated one wine. So we wanna age up to the mechanical age. Um, there's a nice guide here that kind of shows you what's required to get to what age. Um, so for us, we are going to need to build 10 clocks. To build 10 clocks, we're gonna need a microscope to research some gears. Um, to build a microscope, we're gonna need a crystal and a gear. Um, and to get gears, we're going to need to use tools and bricks to generate those. So one thing I didn't realize as I was filming this was in order to get tools and crystals, um, you have to have quite a collection or kind of a stockpile of bricks um, already in your resources. And to do that, you just have to play the game for a while and keep clicking the next button. So what I did in this case was I just went ahead and progressed the game uh, a, a bunch of steps so that we can pick up um, having some tools and crystals in our resource inventory. Um, we do have crystals and gears so I'm going to go ahead and combine a crystal with a gear so that we can create our first microscope. If we were to use one of those mic microscopes, basically the microscope is like a research thing. So we're going to research this uh, gear and we'll see now we're going to get a clock. So now when we click next, we should start to see that progress of the mechanical age start to go up. And you just continue to, to focus on those resources and gather them. And once you have enough, you then age up to the next age.